Um, this is really kind of our the end of our discussion on Japan for like sixth grade history. Um, I've told you guys often enough throughout the year that the, the curriculum around the sixth grade is really about ancient world history. And what you get is this last little piece of feudalism in Japan. This is the last piece of ancient world history before you get into the modern era in Asia, especially concerning Japan. So you'll see down here that we talk, um, I mentioned 1853 and 1854, because that's really kind of when we see the end of the feudalism period. But at this point, we're already in what you would consider more of the modern era of Europe. Um, so a lot of times the Middle Ages, the last little piece through Europe is where we talk about, and that's what we'll be going next. But um, this is our last video on Japan. And this is really where we make this transition in from the ancient feudal world of Japan into the modern world now and a lot of what we see and more and more familiar with Japan. Um, so the feudal period is going to start with the daimyos having way too much power. Um, that was one of the very first things we talked about when we started talking about Japan is that when your landowners begin to have too much power, when they control too much land, control too much money, and then they have the samurais to boot as a military power, that's really when your emperor starts to lose power and they just become a figurehead. That is when the feudalism period starts. The same way that it starts, the opposite is going to happen when it is over. Um, when the feudalism period officially ends, it's going to be where the emperor starts to gain back more power. But it starts when the daimyos have too much power, too much land. Now, that is when the shogunate system is going to kind of come into, underway. So we have the feudalism period, and then we have the shogunate system with the military rule and things like that come in. And under the shogunate system, under this military rule in Japan, they are going to adopt a sort of isolationist policy. And this idea of isolationism is that they don't want a whole lot of foreign nationals coming in. They don't want communication or trade with any other countries. It's just Japan. That's their focus. Is Japan is their only and primary focus. Well, what's going to happen as this isolationist policy starts to dissolve, that's when we're going to start kind of seeing the end of the feudalism period as well. Now, during this time in Japan, during this feudalistic period, samurais were still in, military rule was still in and everything. A group of people that we've mentioned in the past, the Mongols, try to come in and invade Japan, and they're going to try more than once to do so. It will be a failed attempt. The Mongols are not ever actually going to be able to invade and make it into Japan successfully. Um, they are going to be stopped. But after they try to invade, we kind of get this floating world system going on in Japan. And what that means is where we've talked about this socialism, we've talked about this social period. we talked about each of these different social ladders in Japan that they have a spot and they all kind of work together. Well, what happens after this Mongol invasion is now these levels are starting to merge. People are just kind of floating around. Um, it's not going to be if you are a peasant, you are here at this level and you don't move. Now you can move up and down and it starts to get a little bit more fluid. And that's when you first start to see this feudalism period kind of start breaking down is when other people start moving around. After this Mongol invasion, though, the military kind of takes on a different role and they begin to replace the samurai system. Well, once you have a group of people replacing your soldiers who are here as, you know, pledging loyalty to your landowners and protecting everyone below them, that's when you start to see that feudalism system start to break down even further. Now, we kind of get the official effective end of feudalism in the mid-1800s when a U.S. naval ship, so this is going to be right before the Civil War gets started here in the United States, a U.S. naval ship under Commodore Perry is going to land in Japan, and they're here to force the Japanese to trade with them, to open their borders and start trading. And you're like, well, Miss Bird, how are they able to force them? Well, Commodore Perry just doesn't show up in one ship by himself. He's a naval officer, so he shows up with quite a large force coming with him, and it was kind of forcing them to trade by military might. Be like, if you don't trade with us, we can pretty much come in and take over anyways. And sort of this mentality of almost bullying Japan into coming in and trading with them. But what happens is when the U.S. naval ships land in Japan and they start to trade with them, 
they do start to trade. And as they start to trade, this military kind of solidifies their new role. The samurai system is kind of dissolved completely. And it starts to dissolve the feudal system because now as they're starting to trade, as these different goods and technologies are now coming back into Japan, whereas before they had been completely isolated. They didn't have any of this stuff coming in. They were just Japan. Well, once Japan starts trading with these other countries and they're no longer completely isolated, as the trade increases, as the money increases, as these other people start to kind of gain more power and prominence through trade, that's when your emperor starts to gain his power back. And when your emperor starts to gain his power back, that's when the feudal system is effectively dissolved because now the emperor controls everything, comes back in, no longer just a figurehead. It is an actual figure with power and they're in charge of the military and things like that. Now, um, there's a lot of different resources about how Commodore Perry's kind of trek into Japan, how him traveling into Japan really, really shook, like shook things up and kind of changed it a whole lot. Well, one of the things that you see a lot of times discussed with this is that this kind of forcing into trade, this idea that Japan and the United States are now reliant on each other in some regards, this kind of trade relationship that develops is eventually going to cause some issues when we get later on. This trade relationship with Japan is going to be one of the reasons why we have some major conflicts with Japan personally during World War II. So our discussion on Japan is over. The feudal system has now completely dissolved and you have finished your first online unit with Japan. So um, next week, be sure to check out the videos because we'll be starting a complete new, completely new unit. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.